All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Starlink Satellite Pack, which is being made by form user Akino. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is, well, pretty self-explanatory here, the Starlink Satellite, so that you too can create your very own Starlink network, causing headaches for astronomers everywhere. Good times. So let's uh, jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get here. Now it's going to be a pretty quick video because, well, it's really only one part. Technically two, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. So let's go ahead and take a gander at, of course... The Starlink Satellite, which is an all-in-one part here to create your satellite in a singular part, and is an unmanned command pod, of course, with a built-in data transmitter, a deployable solar panel producing 40 electric charge per second, a tiny little xenon engine producing a max of 2 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum with an ISP of 4200, also, of course, having a built-in reactor Action Wheel SAS, it's a very own separator, and a battery holding 500 electric charge, and a Xenon tank holding another 500 there as well. And as you can see here, it is a pretty darn good looking part, and is surprisingly large. I didn't really think that these satellites were as large as this, but if we do grab a Mark I command pod and pop it on over there on the attachment point, it's a pretty big satellite, though at the same time, an amazingly compact satellite. It is just so very flat, and that is pretty cool in my opinion. But uh, talking about some of the features here, well, you could just see our attachment point there. We've got two on either side of that little support so that we can pop on others of these satellites, and that's why we do have two parts here. Now, they're both Starlink satellites, but we have a left and a right version. And we have that so that we can, if we pop this one on, rotate it around, put these satellites in series like so. So you have your left-hand side one and your right-hand side one. And then you can pop on top of that another left and another right, etc. Rinse and repeat until you have as many satellites as you need to send into orbit in a single mission, which is pretty nice. I really, really do like that. It's a very convenient little build. And there is, as you can see here, a slight texture difference between the two. The left-hand one has a lighter color for the antennae there, or well, really small little communication dishes, and we have a darker texture for the one on the right-hand side. I honestly thought that might may have been a glitch at first, but yeah, no, no, it seems to be a conscious decision there, and is a handy one, so you do know which is which without having to really think too hard about it. And each of these satellites on their own, besides being surprisingly compact, have a lot of great little features. Now, I did mention we have the little Xenon engine on them, and that is with that little part right there, that is the engine, which um, isn't exactly centered and so does kind of cause it to rotate a little bit when you uh, ignite the engine, so you gotta, you gotta have to compensate a little bit, which is a little strange. Now we do, of course, also have the little uh, communication dishes there, so if we extend the antennae, there we go, they flip on out on either side. And we do also have our extendable solar panel, which is massive! I mean, look at how big this is! It is, again, a surprisingly large yet surprisingly compact satellite design. And it folds in so nicely and we get this just gigantic solar panel here. Producing, again, quite a lot of electric charge. And we even can rotate it. So we can either have it in line with the whole thing or at a 90 degree angle, whichever you do prefer. And all in all, it's a pretty cool design that I very much do enjoy. And with the left-right mechanic and then stacking them on top, you can get some, um, 
pretty impressive stacks. Now, this is a ship design that came with the uh, mod files here. In fact, the mod maker included four different designs for you to start out with. A 10 stack, a 30 stack, and then two different 60 stacks. This is the 60 one right here. So as you can see, you can do the left and right versions of them stacking one after another for as many as you need. Now, <laughs> fun thing with this one, I put it into space earlier, and when I went to deploy and separate them all out, oh boy, oh. I went down to two frames a second because it is 60 independent satellites all of a sudden going, oh hey, I'm my own thing now. It, um, it was interesting. Now it's also at this point, I should talk about a prerequisite for this. Now there are some recommended ones like the SpaceX pack, uh, so you can actually launch these on SpaceX rockets, but the one mod you really need is Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Now technically, it doesn't, like, stop it from working, but I'll show you here because it's kind of funny. If we go to the launch pad real quick, yeah, to clear the other one up. Uh, when we load in with one of these giant towers of Starlink satellites without Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, which I do not currently have installed, uh, things get a little interesting. As you can see, the entire thing just goes wobbly and like an accordion. And if we actually let this sit for a while, it'll do one of two things. Either even out and be fine, or it'll start breaking the ones on the bottom. It's I've had both occur to me when playing around with this. But yes, without Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, you get this weird floppiness to your stacks of Starlink satellites. With it installed, they're all much better connections there, and it is just that nice rigid shape for your cluster. But let's actually head to the tracking station, where I do have one of these little Starlink satellites up in orbit so we can take a look at its features in action and yeah it's just overall a very cool thing I do like it so here is our undeployed one let's uh, just turn off the UI there and flip out those antenna slash dishes and then extend our gigantic solar array there and I couldn't find on the action groups where to do the rotate, but uh, so there we go. Just go in and rotate that thing. UI back off, and we have our just magnificently large and beautiful satellite here. And it is just overall a very cool design and a nice addition, in my opinion, to any of the existing SpaceX packs that are out there. It's just a fun little thing. Now, with the reaction wheels and how small and light this thing is, it's, uh, you know, pretty easy to maneuver around to get it to do whatever you want or need it to do. And again, it does have that small little Xenon engine that if I do activate there and throttle up, you can see the particle effects. Now, I've got the SAS on right now, which is doing a good job compensating. Uh, but if we do throttle it all the way up, you can see it start to shake a little bit. And if I turn that off, like I mentioned earlier, since it's not perfectly in line centered, you just start spinning. Thankfully, though, the SAS does a pretty good job of holding it in place. Occasionally, you might have to do a little bit of adjustment there to keep it on course. But overall, I mean, it does the job pretty darn well. And it's just nice having this tiny, tiny little engine on this oddly compact yet oddly massive satellite. It's wonderful. So if you'd like to take a look at this for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this one today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.